10,000 years ago, all the continents of Azeroth were as one. And it is said that all the rivers in the world flowed to one magical place. This was the ancient empire of Pandaria, nestled in the most fertile of river valleys at the far end of the world. Behold, the last emperor on the day of his coronation. His name was Xiao Hao. Yang Xiao Hao was born to be emperor and wanted for nothing. The wealth of the great Pandaren Empire was his to command. All Pandaren emperors begin their reign by consulting with the great Jinyu elders. It was said that the Jinyu could talk to the rivers, that they could hear whispers of the future in the rippling waves. The great water speaker closed his eyes and listened to the rivers. He listened for the emperor's long life and prosperous realm, but he heard something else entirely. The wise old Jinyu saw a faraway land, a kingdom of elves grown bold in their arrogance. He saw a pit of fire, a great maw opening upon countless horrors. Numberless demons were about to pour forth onto Azeroth, rending the land, corrupting all they touched. Even if the demons were defeated, the world would be forever broken, the continents forever shattered. Emperor Xiao Hao watched in disbelief as the Jinyu water speaker reeled from the terror of his vision. What did you see? Xiao Hao asked. Long life? Prosperous realm? But the future held neither for the last emperor of the Pandaren. No, young Xiao Hao could not rest on the riches of his empire. If he was to save his land and his people, he would be called to do something great. He would embark on an epic journey. He would sacrifice all that he was. This is his story. The horrible vision of the Sundering weighed heavily on Emperor Xiao Hao. Cold and alone, he ascended Mount Neverest, seeking wisdom from the Jade Serpent. What troubles you, young Emperor? The Spirit of Wisdom asked. Xiao Hao replied, Countless demons will soon pour over Azeroth. What must I do to save my kingdom? The Jade Serpent answered, Seek out the heart of Pandaria, for the answer lies within. But how can I find it? The Emperor protested. Your emotions cloud you, said the Serpent. Free yourself of these burdens. Let the land be your teacher. But the Emperor did not understand. He sulked back to his home in the Jade Forest. As he traveled, he commiserated with his old friend, the Monkey King. 
I was to have a long life, a prosperous realm, the Emperor cried. I cannot do this. Relax, said the Monkey King. We are in this together. As he spoke, the four winds began to howl. A great gust blew the Monkey King away. The Monkey King laughed and called out above the rowing storm, Sorry, you can't fight fate. The Emperor cried out for his friend. No, wait. I cannot do this alone. And in that moment, all of Xiaohao's uncertainty was manifest in a terrible dark energy, a shah of doubt. The more the Emperor struggled, the more he weakened. The Shah would surely overtake him. Then, Xiao Hao remembered the wisdom of the Jade Serpent, and he looked to the land for answers. Nearby, the bamboo of the Jade Forest was also threatened. The reeds that stood rigid against the gale broke under its force. But the reeds that bent with the wind endured the storm and prospered in the rain. Xiao Hao realized the lesson of the reed. And when he turned his back to the Shah, suddenly, all his doubts vanished. He knew he could be more than just emperor. The four winds carried the laughing monkey king over the valley and through the wilds. The emperor's faith led him onward to save his friend and to stop the terrible sundering the water speaker had foreseen. Emperor Xiao Hao, free of doubt, pursued his friend, the Monkey King. With the wind at his back, Xiao Hao ran. But in his haste, the Emperor stumbled into the dense and untamed swamps of the Krasarang Wilds. No! The Emperor cried out. He fought to free himself, but only sank further. The more the Emperor worried, the deeper he sank. His worries had taken form, the Shaw of Despair. Xiao Hao cried out, Help! Far above, the majestic red crane of hope soared. Why do you struggle so? The crane asked. I have lost my friend, my kingdom, Xiao Hao cried. It is hopeless. Your friend is not lost, the crane replied. You are. Again, Xiao Hao looked to Pandaria for the answer. He saw the great tree growing in the middle of the swamp. The branches reached for the heavens, but its roots stretched deep into the earth. Xiao Hao's feet found purchase. With hope in his heart, the emperor reached upward, and the grip of despair loosened. I must never forget who I am, he said. I am the Emperor, and I will save this land. Xiao Hao could hear the Monkey King's laughter on the wind. 
but it came from the west, beyond the serpent's spine wall. This was the land of the Mantid, mortal enemy of all Thandaren. I cannot do this, Xiao Hao decided. Trembling, the Emperor turned to leave. Where are you going? asked a voice. I'm afraid to go on, said the Emperor. Looking into the wastes, he saw a great black ox. Just follow your feet, the black ox said. They will know the way. Xiao Hao descended the wall and crept through the strange realm. To the Emperor, it was a waking nightmare. But his feet led the way. Soon, he heard a dreadful sound. Three vile mantid warriors argued how they would split up and devour their prize. The Monkey King! Xiao Hao was paralyzed with terror. The insidious Shah of Fear held him in place. The voice of the ox came to Xiao Hao, saying, You must not let your fear control you, my emperor. You must control your fear. Xiao Hao looked once again to the land for answers. The great Kaipari trees of the town Long Steps were legendary for their sap. In one bead of amber, Xiao Hao found his answer. I will not be paralyzed by fear, the Emperor proclaimed. Xiao Hao hurled his weight against the nearest tree, and giant globs of sap rained down from above. And now it was the Mantid who were held fast as they struggled against the sap. The Emperor had saved his friend. As they fled, the Monkey King was overwhelmed by doubt. Emperor, we cannot do this alone, he cried. You should create an army to crush the Mantid once and for all. Free of his doubts and master of his fears, the Emperor was more confident than ever. No, said Xiao Hao. The storm that burns the sky comes for the Mantid as well. We need an army to crush a legion. The last emperor of Pandaria faced a terrible fortune. A burning legion set to tear the world asunder. He had cast away his doubt, despair, and fear. Now, confidence brimming, he would build an army. High atop the peaks of Kunlai Summit, the 100 greatest warriors of Pandaria perfected their arts under the watchful eye of the White Tiger, the spirit of strength. I need an army, Xiao Hao announced. I have come for my warriors. But the White Tiger recognized the great darkness within the Brash Emperor. Why do you fight? The Tiger asked. Xiao Hao bristled. To destroy demon hordes, to crush those who oppose me. No, that is no reason to fight, the Tiger said. You are indeed fearless, but still, you are burdened. The Emperor scoffed, so the White Tiger issued a challenge. 
Take this staff. And if you can touch any one of my warriors, they are yours to command. Spurred on by the howls of the Monkey King, the Emperor spun about, thrusting and swinging the staff. But the warriors easily dodged his every blow. Furious, Shao Hao roared. The sum of all his rage, the Shah of Anger burst forth. The Emperor fumed and broke the staff over his knee. Violence and hatred erupted. You see now why you are not ready to lead? The White Tiger proclaimed. Your anger does not empower you. It makes you weak. Defenseless, Xiao Hao faced the darkness he had created. As one, the Shah struck out. But as the smoke cleared, the Emperor stood unharmed. The shape of a mighty warrior lay broken at his feet. A warrior who had paid the ultimate price to save his emperor. Xiao Hao's heart swelled as he knelt humbly before the white tiger. My rage exacted a heavy toll, the emperor said. A single sacrifice has shown me the power of fellowship, of love, of peace. The white tiger nodded. Again, I ask, why do you fight? For home and family, Xiao Hao replied. For the people, I protect. For them, I would give my final breath. Thank you, White Tiger. Relieved at last of all his burdens, the Emperor rose. Come, Monkey King. We must go to the heart of Pandaria before all is lost. As the Emperor and his friends set out, the skies grew black, for the time of the Sundering had come. And so Xiao Hao came to the heart of the land, the sacred veil within the center of his empire. Purged of all his burdens, the emperor radiated enlightenment. Inside the veil, his people huddled for shelter. They knew that the end of the world had come, and they cried out for the Emperor to save them. People of Pandaria, Xiao Hao declared, stay calm, focus your minds, and together we will make it through this. But his people did not understand. As Xiao Hao gazed upon their faces, he saw the burdens that he had overcome. He recognized doubt and despair. He saw his people frozen in fear or trembling with anger. And he knew that they had little time to learn what he had learned. 
Time. My people need time, the Emperor realized. And in that moment, the Emperor recalled the lesson of the Jade Serpent. Seek out the heart of Pandaria, for the answer lies within. As Xiao Hao reflected on his journey, he looked to the land and saw a single blossom in the wind. No matter the burdens I faced, he thought, the land provided guidance. But the truest answers always came from within. And then it became clear. I was to have a long life and a prosperous realm. But I am more than just emperor. I now know what I must do. For I am the heart of Pandaria. People of Pandaria, Shao Hao proclaimed, you are not yet ready to face the storm that comes for you. And I cannot stop it. But you will weather this storm and many more. For I will give you the time to learn the lessons that I have learned. And then, the last Emperor of Pandaria sacrificed all that he was and all that he would be and gave his final breath to become one with the land. A dense mist surrounded and protected his empire. And while the rest of the world broke apart in the fury of the sundering, Pandaria set itself free, hidden by the Emperor's breath. It drifted out to sea like a blossom on the wind. The trees in the Vale have never stopped blossoming. And in time, we Pandaren learned to live as our Emperor lived. His lessons endure in the temples of his land. And from the snowy peaks of Kun Lai Summit, he watches over us. And it is said that if we listen very closely, he speaks to us still through the mists. These are the Emperor's gifts to us. And this is Pandaria. Limitless adventure opened up before us. We rose defiantly against all those that threatened the peace of our kingdoms. We ventured to a new alien world and cast the Lords of Shadow and Flame back into the abyss. It was we who held the line as death itself rose like a tide to swallow everything we held dear. We have endured the breaking of the world and must now face the destroyer and end his cycle of destruction. But soon, 
we will face a new chapter. An adventure unlike any we've known thus far. A mystery shrouded by superstition. A land of forgotten power and ancient magics. And a people that may well change the fate of us all. For all the challenges we have faced and all the places we have been, Azeroth's limits have yet to be revealed. Turn this place into a sinkhole! <laughs> Why we fight is to ask why the leaves fall. It is in their nature. Perhaps there is a better question. Why do we fight? To protect home and family. To preserve balance and bring harmony. For my kind, the true question is... What is worth fighting for?
We've made a thorough inspection of the wreckage, Your Majesty. There is no sign of Admiral Taylor or his ship. Two hundred ships at my disposal, yet the one carrying my son goes missing! What of their last message? Show me whatever you have. We have been drawn off course! Board air fleet! Any casualties! Shipwrecked on an uncharted isle! But the White Pawn is accounted for! Repeat, the White Pawn is safe! Anduin. Surprise attack! Requesting immediate if anyone's received! Sir, the Seventh Fleet has already been dispatched, but it could take weeks before it... There's no time to waste. We'll send a small elite force to secure this new land and bring back my son. I am pleased to report that the battle at sea goes well, War Chief. Our forces report decisive victories off the coasts of Daenerys and Tol Barad. Alliance blood spills. This pleases me, General. There's more. I received word that our southern fleet engaged an Alliance envoy. We chased the Royal Flagship until it ran aground. Aground? Where? Apparently, they found a massive, uncharted landmass, shrouded by dense mists. And you let the Alliance get there first! Redirect the invasion fleet! General, you and your best veterans will pave our way! Storm the shore, and paint this new continent red! The flagship's last reported position was below. Can you see anything? Fog. Nothing but dense fog. Wait. Land! Starboard! I see ships! Those are horde vessels. General Quarters, get our birds in the air! Clear the decks! Stations, people! Let's go to war! Nightwing, report. What's going on down there? No sign of the flagship. No sign of Admiral Taylor or Prince Anduin. Horde troops are swimming towards your position. Open fire at once. Admiral, I think they mean to surrender. They're not armed. They're just trying not to drown. You don't think they'll hesitate to strangle you with their bare hands? Gun them down! That's not right. This is a massacre. They were unarmed. I... I don't... I don't feel well. Maybe they deserve to die. You beasts! What sort of madness is this? Men, stand down! This is one of the natives. We are from the Alliance and mean you no harm. Tell me, what was that shadow you drew out of me? This is not the place to explain. In short, your own doubts have been made manifest as a consequence of your actions. You don't understand. We're fighting a war here. Oh, I understand perfectly. I have eyes. But Pandaria is not like whatever land you came from. It lives and breathes. You should be careful what kind of energy you bring here. Now put those weapons away. We've been flying in this mist for hours, General. The crew grows... uneasy. Back to your post, soldier. We'll find this land, or die trying. Alliance! 
Giant ship! Hard side! Attack! Mercy, what happened here? What was that thing? Your foe was overwhelmed by a dark energy we call the Sha. It thrives on negative emotions, such as doubt. It has been many years since I have seen it manifest so dramatically. I am not surprised. The Horde are monsters. We are here on a peaceful rescue mission. Will you help us? I have seen your Sky Fortress. Your people have an interesting notion of peace. Left to their own devices, the Horde will overwhelm your land. Will you not help us fight them? We are not afraid to fight. Our warriors, while few in number, are extremely skilled. But we will not participate in this genocidal bloodbath of yours. Your conflict will have immense consequences here. Do not bring your war to these shores. Two hundred ships at my disposal, yet the one carrying my son goes missing. I am sorry, but I cannot go back just yet. I've decided to search for the veil. Storm the shore, and paint this new continent red! My, my. Hello, stranger. Sampled my dream brew, I see. Its visions are hard to interpret. Half truth, half illusion. Who's to say which is which? Yeah. Do you feel it? A perfect stillness of the soul. Your consciousness is expanding. Concentrate on who you are looking for. The boy prince. The young lion. Journey through time and space. Open the eye of your soul. Do you see him? I am Anduin Rin. Prince of Stormwind, I won't die here. Not like this. Sorry, but I cannot go back just yet. I've decided to search for the Veil. I must find the sacred pools and study their healing powers. Prince Anduin, we've come to take you home. Come quietly now. I'm sorry, but I won't. I'm sure you understand my reasons. Hey! Oh! Oh, you're absolutely right, Prince Anduin. You're free to go as you please. Come on, let's go. Sully, how could you just let him go? <laughs> hey, what, what, what happened? You silly dwarf, he mind-controlled you. Now he's gone. What? Oh, I can't believe he did that to me. I hope you're ready to explain this to Admiral Taylor. 
Cheeky little bugger. I didn't think he had it in him. I apologize for the deception, but it was necessary. In thousands of years, we have never seen one of your kind. It was imperative that I first measure the bearing of your heart. Come ride with me, little one. There is something I wish you to see. The temple priests are too frightened to face the truth. I grow old, little one. My time on this world is nearly done. Do you see the great statue in the distance? The builders have toiled for many years, and it is nearly complete. A little more jade, the jade you helped to acquire, and it will be finished. With my last breath, I will transfer my life essence into the statue, and a new guardian will be born. Do not be saddened. The cycle is clear. It neither begins nor ends with me. Someday, you may also be called upon to defend all that is dear to you. When that day comes, seek all the light and wonder of this world and fight. We live together or we die together. All of Pandaria is connected. I grow weary. I must rest now. Goodbye, little one. I will see you soon enough.
A message must lie within. What fate did the Emperor foresee? We meet again, stranger from beyond the mists. This battle has extracted a heavy toll. My own rebirth will have to wait for several years. Learn from this, stranger. I do not know why the mists have opened. But I know that it is for a reason. It is clear that you are not here to bring your war to these lands. There is a darkness hidden here in Pandaria. This you have seen for yourself. But I am certain that the mist parted for a reason. You are that reason. Find your purpose here. You can learn a great deal about this land from the Valley of the Four Winds. There is another visitor from beyond the mists here. Chen Stormstout, he is called. He is Pandaren, but from a different homeland. Walk this land with Chen at your side. Make friends among the people here. You will find answers in time.
What was that noise? It came from the wall, sir. I know where it came from. What was it? No. No! Men! Two arms! Assist Captain Oakenshield in the front. Greens Hill, Black Soil, cover our left flank. I don't want any surprises. Levin, take the right side. You're on your own. Everyone else, if you can hold a weapon, protect this village. Don't let them pass this line. You... You're nothing but farmer's children. We don't stand a chance. Everyone! Fall back! Fall back! For Pandaria! Who are you? Does it matter who we are? We are here to help you. You were surrendering? Why? Because these invaders can break down a wall. You have got another wall. And it is made up of the people who call this place home. Hey, give me one of them pitchforks. Any one of us would lay down our life to protect this land. This land, it belongs to us. It belongs to our ancestors. It belongs to our children. And we are not about to let that change. <laughs> the Yango warlord shows his face. Come, let's finish this. 
Goodbye. As a stranger to these lands, you may not be familiar with the Shadow Pan. Our charge is an ancient one, dating back to the time of Shao Hao, our founder and the last emperor of Pandaria. Dark energies embrace this land. Anger, hatred, fear, doubt. These negative emotions can manifest in physical form. We call this dark energy Sha. It is our sacred duty to monitor and imprison the Sha, to defeat it wherever it darkens the hearts of our people. In all my years, I have never seen the Sha so active as when your soldiers landed on our shores. Pandaria does not have a standing army. We, the Shadowpan, are its first and only line of defense. Taran Zhu leads the Shadow Pan as his father did before him, but he has elected to close our monastery gates. Why? We must find out. Without the Shadow Pan, Pandaria will surely be engulfed in darkness. The Shah of Hatred is inside that manted structure. I suspect it was drawn to a powerful host there. To get in, we will need specially tuned crystals from some of the manted leaders in the area. I located these leaders here. Here. And here. It is said the God King Rastakan, ruler of the Zandalari, lords over his mighty kingdom from a throne carved of solid gold. Years ago, as he sat upon this opulent seat of power, he was visited by the dark prophet Zul. Zul warned King Rastakan of a terrible cataclysm, for Zul had seen a vision of the great armored dragon clenching the world in his ferocious jaws. King Rastakhan did nothing. Months later, Zul returned, bearing more grim news from his visions. He saw a legion of serpents pouring forth from a gaping fissure that tore open the floor of the ocean. Still, King Rastakhan did nothing. Finally, mere months before the cataclysm, Zul returned, tearing his clothes and throwing his staff to the ground, Zul spoke of earthquakes and tidal waves. He described the golden capital of Zandalar, slowly sinking beneath the waves in the aftermath of the cataclysm, its once great people drowning as their mighty work slipped forever beneath the sea. King Rastakhan tired of Zul and his troubling nightmares. To be rid of the Prophet, he granted Zul the use of his largest ships so that he and his followers could seek a new land if his visions came to pass. And his visions did come to pass. When Deathwing rose from the Maelstrom, dark, angry waves crashed into the Zandalari capital. The spine of the land broke in two, and soon the city and all its riches began to slide into the hungry sea. The Zandalari people turned to their king for help, but there was only one Zandalari equipped to help them, the Prophet Zul. The Prophet and the mighty war fleet he had assembled while his king sat idle. You see, the true power of kings and emperors 
stems from the power to aid their people. The moment they fail, they cede their power to the one who can. Under Kun Lai, thunder sleeps. The storm long spent their rests. But blood of brother kingdom keeps alive the dispossessed. By Zandalari blood, he will be taken. To Zandalari voice, he will awaken. <laughs> Secure the remains, brothers. The Thunder King shall live again. <laughs> Every good story needs a hero. of the Thunder King were taken to the Isle of Reckley. We performed the ancient rites. <laughs> Even now, the true Emperor of Pandaria lives and breathes once more. Woe to the Pandaran usurpers! <coughs> the Mogu will rule this land again. And we, Zandalari, will have a new homeland. Children of Pandaria. The mists have fallen. For good or for ill, our land is open to all. Pandaran, born and raised on the mysterious Wandering Isle. While many of your fellow Pandaran prefer a tranquil life, the lure of adventure burns in your blood. Recently, the Wandering Isle has begun erratically weaving about the world's oceans. The air grows cold, and your island home is spiraling toward disaster. As one of the most promising of students at Master Shang's monastery, you may just be the salvation for your people. But first, you must complete your training. Where's Master Shang? Gee, they were in the Wood of Staves. You know where Master Shang is now. <sighs> Let a Pandoran hope, would you? I'm going to miss the old man. Ji, be respectful when we speak to Shenzhen Su. When am I not respectful? You hurt me, Asa. I might, if you embarrass us. Shenzhen Su, we are the descendants of Lu Lang. We've sensed your pain, and we want to help. What ails you, Shenzhen Su? What can we do? I... Pain. But it warms my heart that Liu Lang's grandchildren have not forgotten me. There is a thorn in my side. I... I cannot remove it. The pain is unbearable. And I can no 
longer swim straight. Please, grandchildren, can you remove this thorn? I cannot do so on my own. Of course, Shenzhen Su, but your shell is large and I do not know where this thorn could be. It is in the forest, where your feet do not walk. Continue along the mountains and you will find it. We will find it and we will remove it. You have our word. Thank you. Grandchildren. A thorn? Mm. I left my tweezers at home. How could such a thing cause pain to something so large? We will know soon enough. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Is that a boat? It is a boat. A whole airship. That's a bigger thorn than I was expecting. Those aren't Pandaren down there. They've got no fur. Someone has crashed into our island. Removing this thorn may be more complicated than we thought. We should let Elder Shaopai know, and then plan our next move. His wounds can be healed. I hope you can forgive yourself for what you have done to him. It's working. The wound is closing. We risked everything, but we did it. Shenzhen Su will be okay. upon a time. Moments ago, in fact, a great king sought help from a trio of powerful dwarves, the Council of Three Hammers. The king's scouts had discovered that Zandalari trolls threatened the dwarven capital. Surely, the king thought, if he helped them with their troll problem, they would give him more troops for his campaign against the Horde. But what the king did not realize is that the dwarves did not trust one another. We cannot help you, said the Bronzebeard Dwarf, for if we turn our back on the Dark Irons, they will defeat the Wild Hammer and take over Ironforge. We cannot help you, said the Wild Hammer Dwarf, for if we turn our back on the Dark Irons, they will defeat the Bronzebeard and take over Iron Forge. Oh, the king was furious. If none of you help, then Iron Forge will fall under siege. Only one dwarf offered to help the king. We will lend you our strength, said Moira of the Dark Iron. We will trust our dwarven brothers, and we will show them what loyalty means. And so, Moira and the High King set out into the snow to save the city. 
leaving the others to think about their actions. What happens next? I must know. The High King, his champions, and the Dark Iron Dwarves worked together to save Iron Forge. The other Dwarven leaders were ashamed of their behavior and vowed never again to allow fear or distrust to cloud their judgment. And so it was a human king who helped to unite the Dwarven clans so long divided. Free to trust one another, all three Dwarven leaders pledged their full strength to the Alliance cause. Meanwhile, in the city of Orgrimmar, <laughs> War Chief Garrosh Hellscream sent goblin dig teams all across the continent of Pandaria. He promised gold and riches to any who could discover for him the hidden secrets of this land. That filled Pandaria with such a dark and powerful energy. To my surprise, his people have found something right here in the Sacred Vale. What will happen now? Oh, the story is still being written. them cornered inside the temple. We should strike now. Things are rarely what they seem, Tiranda. And my son tells me this is a sacred place. All the more reason to purify it. They're defending a fixed position. I'm not gonna play their game. We'll draw them out. You are wasting precious time. Nobody dislikes Garrosh more than me. I wrestle with my anger every day. Come with me. Look around you a moment. In the aftermath of Theramore, my first instinct was to decimate Orgrimmar. To kill every man, woman, and child in the city. Jaina... I'm not proud. Since then, Kalatgos and I have talked at length about power and how it should be used. The Kirin Tor has a legacy of abuse. Kel'Thuzad turned his knowledge of the arcane arts toward necromancy. Kael'thas Sunstrider was also a student here. Another of our fold who betrayed us. Every day I ask myself, what's the right thing to do? Anduin, you know more than anyone. It's important to separate the Horde from its people. The Sun Reavers still operate within this city. Alliance and Horde work together. As long as we stay above the war, then there's hope for the world as a whole. I see our city as a beacon of light showing the way. If we can trust one another here, then there's hope for the rest of the world. Understand. I'll talk to my father. Thank you, Anduin. You are a hero of the Horde. Your deeds in Northrend and during the Cataclysm are the stuff of legend. For this reason, I trust in your discretion. I am a ranger, not a politician. But like it or not, the mantle of leadership has fallen on my shoulders. My people suffered through so many challenges and betrayals, look to me to secure their future. We Sindori were driven to the Horde 
by the bigotry and distrust of the Alliance. Now, I look at our war chief, and I begin to see the very same racism. He is willing to throw away our lives for his agenda. Know this, I won't stand idle if the Horde interests conflict with those of my people. I may reconsider old alliances. Keep your eyes open, champion. We are all in this together. For now. Are the preparations complete? Yes, Warlord. The traps are set. The Divine Bell will be safe within this crypt. Ready for the day that the Thunder King returns. We have but to evacuate the workers and the rest of our warriors. There is no time. The Shadow Pan trackers are too close. They cannot learn the location of the bell. Very well then, may the ghosts of our brothers guard this place for all eternity. Their sacrifice will not be in vain. And neither of our two will yours. Divine Bell. We must take it somewhere safe. Sentinels, let's get to work. <laughs> My death means nothing! The Divine Bell is already in diasis. <laughs> you filthy horde! We'll never have it! Oh no, the bell! Passion, come with me. I had Darnassus locked down. Every fumbling rogue that tried to sneak into the city, I caught them. I snatched every two-bit charlatan that attempted to teleport through my traps. They couldn't possibly have gotten through. This was an inside job. Somebody inside the city has the bell, unless... No. These portals connect to Deleron. That means the Kirin Tor. My own, Garen Tor, helped the Horde commit this atrocity. I will not be betrayed again. Those responsible for this will be punished. Eat this, Sun Reaver! You've betrayed the Kirin Tor, Sun Reaver. You've allowed Garrosh to move his forces through my city. You have it all wrong, Jaina. I did nothing. You looked the other way. You and your insubordinate kind are no longer welcome here. This is our city too, Proudmoor. <laughs> I see. I will remove the Sun Reavers by force then. You, Aethys, will be coming with me. Did you think your actions would have no consequence? You brought this on yourself, Sun Reavers. Aethys, you're alive. Thanks to this hero, a few of us made it out of there. <clears throat> Many more have been sent to the Violet Hold. Anara Lashdanal, will someone tell me what is going on in Dalaran? Proudmoor. She's gone and expelled the Sun Reavers from the city. She's purging the Horde from the Kirin Tor. She's gone too far. I'm certain the Alliance can move their war mages through the city at will. That human witch! 
When will they learn? When will they see that the Horde exists because of the Alliance? Because of their prejudice and their bigotry? They force us ever closer to Hellscream's Horde. My lord. Alduran, summon the Rangers. Romath, assemble the Blood Magi and add the Sun Reaver's strength to your own. We Sindori will take our future into our own hands. And get this damn thing out of my sight. Hellscream bought his treasure with the blood of my people. I hope it destroys him. My lord, you would make a fine war chief. It may come to that. Bring me my blades. The next move is mine. Anna Jaina, what's happening in Dalaran? Has there been an attack? The Kirin Tor was betrayed from within. I've handled the situation. How? I've purged the Horde from Delaron. You have what you wanted, Your Majesty. The Kirin Tor belongs to the Alliance. But you said that- I know what I said. My trust was misplaced. What of the Sindori? The Sun Reavers? Those that surrendered are being taken to the Violet Hold. I make no guarantees about those who chose to fight. Jaina, you need to talk to me before you act. How I run the Kirin Tor is my business. I was trying to negotiate with the Sindari. I was opening discussions to bring them into the Alliance. By attacking their people, you forced their hand. They chose their own path. You've driven them back to the Horde. You're fooling yourself. Once Horde, always Horde. I see that now. I'm mobilizing the Kirin Tor. Jaina, we've got to work together on this. The Alliance must act as one. Don't get soft on me, Barry. We are the Horde! We are slaves to nothing and no one! With the Divine Bell, I will burn away any remnants of weakness within us. Fear, despair, hatred, doubt. The lesser races are buried beneath their weight. But we will control their power. Together, we will destroy the Alliance and claim what is rightfully ours. Let our song of victory begin! I will not let you do this. I swear to it. Stop me then, human. has cost me a great warrior, young prince. You'll pay with your life! That is where you are wrong, Garrosh. The Mogu made the Divine Bell to create chaos, but the Pandaren created a special mallet to turn the echoes of that chaos into perfect harmony. That mallet was hidden for thousands of years. Until now. 
die, whelp! Your alliance must be at its end if you're sending your children against me. I will let you live, so that you can tell your king of the price of his continued defiance. <laughs> Garrosh attacked my son? Where is he? Anduin! Oh, Anduin, what were you thinking? I should have sent you back to Stormwind. He's alive. But his bones are shattered. Send for Velen. Bring him here at once. My king, I promise you, the Kirin Tor will come down on Garrosh so hard his ancestors will reel. Blood will pay for blood. Jaina. I will end Garrosh for this. His hold already crumbles beneath him. We will deliver the final blow. Champion, you and Anduin thwarted the Warchief today, and won the Alliance a critical victory. But please, leave me now. I must tend to my son, and prepare for our next battle. Fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, as parents, we pass our legacy on to our children. What values do we choose to instill in our progeny? What will our children learn from our mistakes? What sort of world will we create and leave behind for our daughters and sons? Parents place their children on a path they do not always know where the road will take them. The Mogul were children as well. Children of the Titans. They were once a legion of stone, heartless and obedient. By the Titans' command, they fought the terrible servants of the old gods. They shaped the mountains and carved the rivers of the land and they created a magical cradle of life in a hidden valley that we now call the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. But eventually, the Titans fell silent and their creations were cursed with flesh. The Mogu grew restless. Many generations later, when the Thunder King united them, they seized upon their legacy. I truly believe now that the Mogu thought they were doing the work of the Titans. They fought against the Mantid and used the powers of the Veil to create new life. Oh, but such terrible works. Parents cannot always be assured of the legacy they will leave behind. How especially true this is, when the parents are gods, and their children, monsters. The Mogu tell a legend about Le Shen, the Thunder King. It is said that he tore out the very heart of the Mogu god, and from that hateful act, he gained power over wind and storm. His followers fell to their knees before him. We will call you the Lightning King, they said. But Le Shen did not agree. Lightning strikes in an instant and is over in a flash, he said. But thunder, thunder, thunder proclaims the coming of the storm. Thunder quakes the skies long before the lightning strikes, and thunder echoes in the hills long after lightning's power is spent. It is thunder that sends animals cowering 
and fills the hearts of peasants with dread. Let thunder be my herald, so that my power is felt throughout the land. I will be the Thunder King. Oh, my friend, that awful sound. For a hundred, hundred generations, the crash of thunder filled the hearts of Pandaren with terror. It is said that, after the revolution, the Red Crane of Hope placed the rainbow in the sky, so that Pandaren would know not to fear the storms any longer. I do not see any rainbows today. Do you? Pandaria, her hills of gold, in dark and mournful times of old, did once a hopeless horror hold. When from her sacred veil did spring, with storm and flash, a monstrous thing, his name, Lei Shen, the Thunder King. His thunder boomed across the land, and none who dared and fought could stand against the Iron Tyrant's hand. A palace grand, a warm domain, such mighty works born of his reign, built by slaves, their hearts in chains. But seasons change and tyrants die, his fury spent in times gone by. The thunder slept beneath Kunlai. Secure the remains, brothers. By Zandalari hands, he has been taken. By Zandalari voice, he has awakened. The unworthy have not yet learned of my power. Forgot Al Chukla, add my strength to my <laughs> Make a demonstration of these invaders, such that all nations tremble before me. All will fall before us. Shall we secure the inner courtyard? None should look upon my works and live. As my emperor wills. Everyone, stay together, stay focused! Destroy them, my brothers! You have swept the filth from my doorstep. Perhaps you are worthy of my attention. But your trespass ends here! None may enter my forbidden stronghold! I shall rebuild this bridge with your bones for bricks!
It thirsts. Bring it to the pools. Enough! You have run rampant for far too long, Hell Scream. But that stops now. <laughs> Step aside, Pandaren. You confront a force beyond reckoning. Your father dabbled in powers beyond reckoning. Where is he now? <laughs> And others! You are nothing like them! They are no longer part of my horde! <laughs> the world will hear of this. They will come for you. Yes. I'm counting on it. The armies of the world will come for me. And within my fortress, they will face all the terrible creatures I have wrought. The boundless power I have mastered. And one by one, they will fall at my feet. Anyone who would rise against my new horde will be impaled upon the spires of Orgrimmar! You, Pandaren, tried to bury your hate and your anger, but such power cannot be contained. It must be unleashed! Time will come when you will answer for your crimes. I answer to no one!
Said. Heroes, I salute you. There's something right foul in these chambers below the city. Oh, look. You're the ones that smashed up my juggernaut. Let's see how you like the newest addition to the War Chief's arsenal. The Iron Star. Oof, that looks dangerous. Get in there, boys, and show him what we're made of. <laughs> A right deadly machine that is. Best watch your step down here, heroes. Lay down the mantle of War Chief. We can end this here, now, with no more bloodshed. Ha! <laughs> Do you remember nothing of honor, of glory on a battlefield? You who would parley with the humans, who allowed warlocks to practice their dark magics right under our feet. You are weak. We are the Orcish Horde, the true Horde! We die, bloody and thrashing, on the field of battle, like true Orcs should! You are an Orc no longer, and speak for none but yourself! You betrayed our people to forge your fragile alliances, and I will take great pleasure in tearing them apart. Then you have forced my hand. I will correct the mistake I made long ago. Spirits of the wind, the earth, the water, hear my call! Come to my aid! <laughs> Fool! My dark shaman have twisted and tortured the elements for miles around. They cannot hear you now. Once again, you prove too weak and powerless to do anything. Never powerless, Garrosh. And never alone. So, you wish to face off against a real Orc War Chief. So be it. You disappoint me. Garrosh. You are not worthy of your father's legacy. His punishment is not for you alone to decide. I won't let you take him. We have all suffered from his atrocities. My people, more than any other, let him stand trial in Pandaria. There, we will meet out justice for all. The Horde needs its true war chief. Now, more than ever. Yes. But it was you that held the Horde together during this madness. It was you that protected our honor. From this day forward, Vol'jin, if you lead, I will follow. I am not worthy. But I will give my all for the Horde. Ugh, look at them. Already they plot against us. Seize this moment, Varian. Dismantle the Horde. 
Guardsmen! Father, what are you doing? What a king must do. I will speak to your war chief. I speak for the Horde. Very well. The Horde has committed heinous crimes, Vol'jin. But some among you fought against Garrosh's tyranny. For that, I am willing to end this bloodshed. But know this. If your horde fails to uphold honor as Garrosh did, we will end you. Dear Emperor, it is done. The darkness that you once struggled against has been purged from Bandaria forever. But the cost, such a terrible cost. Do not despair the damage that was done here. You triumphed over the darkness I had locked away. You have shown Pandaria the power of a true hero. But the question still remains, why do we fight? I trust you have learned to fight out of fear or anger is to fight a war that never ends. Face your fears, calm your hatreds, Find peace within yourself, so that you may share it with the world around you. These are the greatest treasures in life. Truly they are worth fighting for. Thank you, Emperor. Thank you. So... It was a bear? In a hat! 